Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bill Rawls. I want to let you know about a study that was featured in the newsletter of uh, the prestigious John Hopkins Medical University. Um, the title of their newsletter was Plant Compounds That May Be Better Than Antibiotics for Treating Persistent Lyme Disease. The study was published in a journal called Antibiotics. And uh, while it might seem like a step in the right direction, it still shows they've got a long way to go before they really understand Lyme disease. The study was an in vitro study. That means it wasn't done in a living model like mice or rats. It was done in a test tube, or more appropriately, a petri dish. And they basically took uh, Borrelia persister forms, the kind of... Uh, forms that Borrelia forms inside the body, that it rolls up in a little cyst that's resistant to antibiotics and also immune cell functions. Um, so they uh, took this and they had this in the Petri dish and they, they put different essential oils, uh, 35 different essential oils to see if they would have an effect. And they found that 10 of the oils actually performed better than any known antibiotic for killing persister forms. But again, you got to recognize this was in a test tube, not in a living model, which means there might be some problems with that. You have to get the medicine in people. So when you look at the essential oils that they chose, uh, clove, cinnamon, and some of the others, these are the most toxic essential oils out there. These things in their, their, their most, uh, most pure form can burn skin and certainly can burn mucous membranes. So there's a high level of toxicity with these things, um, even more than antibiotics. Uh, interestingly, one of the most potent oils was actually garlic. Now garlic, you know, we think about just cloves of garlic or eating garlic, but garlic essential oil is something different altogether. It is highly caustic. You've got to be very, very careful with it. So these things, while that it, it is interesting that they have value um, as far as killing microbes, th there is concern about using these things for treatment of Lyme disease because you have you got to get them into a person, um, which can be a real problem. Aromatherapy can work but it's um, but still you've got to lose really dilute concentrations much lower than they used in these studies or it'll burn the lungs same goes thing with the skin you know i've used these oils plenty of times and they're really nice for joint rubs um, but you have to use really low concentrations of the 10 oils mentioned or you're going to really burn someone's skin so you have to be careful so it's hard to get the concentrations in the body and they are even used orally. This isn't the first account that uh, essential oils can be used to treat for Lyme, Lyme disease. You know, uh, while I was struggling with Lyme disease myself, I was looking at every different option and had had good success for, for, with herbs and became aware of different protocols on the internet where they were actually using essential oils. They're putting drops of essential oils in capsules and taking them orally. And um, so I wanted to get the full range of experimenting with natural therapy. So I ordered all the different oils, which included many of the ones on the list in this study and uh, got capsules, put the drops in capsules, followed the protocol. And I was only able to get a couple of days and it just really burned my stomach and intestinal tract. And I found that uh, it was an ideal therapy. Um, I, I wouldn't take it off the table. I think all of these things can have value in certain cases, but I certainly wouldn't list this as a primary therapy for Lyme disease. Um, so when you come around to those persister forms, the only thing that really truly works is your immune system. So suppressing the microbes, suppressing the microbes for a long time, and that's where herbs, regular herbs, now herbs, are the aqueous base chemicals um, include some of the essential oils um, usually with an water alcohol extraction but it's not the same thing as essential oils which are just the pure oils from the plant which have a much higher level of toxicity so the nice thing about the herbs is you can use the herbs for a long time 
Um, you can use them for months, years. I've been taking herbs for years and years. So you suppress these things long term, you boost your immune system at the same time, which is, is ultimately you're going to basically wear these things down. So yeah, maybe there's a place for essential oils, but I think you have to be really careful with them. I would definitely put primary herb, herbal therapies as your primary therapy and save these heroic therapies, antibiotics, uh, so oral essential oils, and some of these other things for if just nothing else is working. Um, the other problem with this approach is all that they were looking at is Borrelia. And we now know that Lyme disease is a polymicrobial infection. It involves many microbes. Um, so the same thing goes with the herbal therapy. You're getting a broad range of coverage that is suppressive long-term and you're boosting the immune system, which is what you have to do to get over Lyme disease. So even though this, stu this study is valuable, I think you have to take it with a grain of salt and not necessarily put this up front uh, compared to a lot of other more important therapies. So have a great day. Thanks very much. Take care.